Welcome to Son of a Pizza Man. My name is Enzo. Uh, today, I have a very special guest with me. Uh, I have uh, Sarhan here with me. Thank Hello, you for Sarhan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're both sons of pizza men, so yeah. that's kind of kind of why. Yeah, yeah kind of why I wanted to do this. So um, maybe let's start with. Um, like your background and like maybe like where you where you grew up and and how you you were brought up in the in the pizza world I guess my family had a pizzeria for about two decades in Astoria Queens where I grew up it's called Boston Pizza which is you know can be taken as a interesting name for a pizzeria in New York yeah but we had it from 97 up until right about COVID time. So my parents retired right before that, uh, that world event took place. Okay. So yeah. yeah, we opened it when I was, I guess, in fourth grade or so around that time. And I am now 34 and my family had always been in the restaurant business, you know, even before I was born, we had a kind of like a fast casual salad business, kind of like chopped. I don't know if they have that at where you are, but it was like a juice salad kind of business and you had a bunch okay. of yeah, yeah. like that throughout the city on like Third Avenue, Seventh Avenue, Lexington, Long Island City. We had a quite a number of them. And those were our prior stores and then in ninety seven we had the opening of our pizzeria. So and actually before it was a pizzeria, we opened it as like a fancy Turkish restaurant, like a sit-down style. Okay. Okay. And that didn't even last, it didn't even last like a year. Um, okay. you know, my family had it used to like fast, you know, fast food style. So right. we had a friend in Boston who taught him his way of making pizza. Um, okay. There's a regional style called New England Greek style. Now he taught them and Given that he was from that city, they named the store after that city. Okay. And yeah, that was uh, that was in our in our lives for about two decades or so. What what, what was your involvement with? The, I mean, I'm assuming you worked at the pizzeria. When I was a kid, it was more you know like handing out menus and things like that. Just, right. You know, very kind of easy stuff. And around 2015, we had to relocate our shop. So I, I don't know if you're familiar with Astoria. Queens. So a story used to be more, I would say, much more residential. Um, a lot of families there when we when we had opened. And then over the years it, you know, gentrified, changed a lot. You know, the very different energy. Rents like skyrocketed. Right. And we had a location that was on the corner of uh, 37 and Broadway in Astoria. And we had to relocate, you know, our, our lease is up. And we lucked out and we found a spot right across the street. So with the moving, I kind of got more involved. Um, I took it upon myself to just like learn whatever it was that was pizza related and just like just become like a sponge, right. just whatever. Like five years ago, six years ago, if you asked me anything about pizza making, didn't know a thing. Right. So since then, it's just been constant, constant intake of knowledge. So this is a fairly, fairly recent thing for you. <clears throat> yeah, within that, yeah, it's uh, the restaurant thing in my family has always been kind of the periphery. And, you know, I, right. you know, go to school, get a good job. It's kind of, you know, it's always been the, the goal of my right. family. Uh, you know, my, my late uncle who had founded our our restaurant businesses. He, he came here to do his PhD in political science, you know? Oh, and, you know, you know, after getting that, he he's like, you know, I'm just gonna open restaurants. And that was kind of like the anchor for the rest of my family to come here. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I also pursued higher education. I got my master's in political science. So it's, I guess something you don't see all the time, just, pursuing academia and then suddenly like okay i'm gonna do pizza now right. I, I, I think mean, it's something more and more it's been my family for so long yeah. and 
you know, whenever I meet pizza makers, I, I would say I kind of speak the language is yeah. the term I use. Yeah. Just because I know kind of the stuff they have to deal with. And, you know, from often from the consumer side, I, I think there's like, like an empathy gap. Yeah. And I think of another pizza makers kind of see that I understand that like, it's cathartic for them, I would say. Yeah, I think I think uh, just like looking at your Instagram account because yeah. you post so much stuff of uh, like so many like awesome <laughs> uh, pizza shots and like a lot of bread stuff. So yeah. tell me tell me about um, your your bread journey because that's I I think that's fascinating. When I was trying to learn how to make pizza, you know, like I said, I was trying to make be a sponge and just take in whatever I can, whatever I could, and. I uh, I asked uh, Scott Weiner, but I think you know, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like you know, Scott. Everyone knows Scott. Yeah, everyone knows Scott, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, guru, please tell me, like, how how can I improve my pizza making? And yeah. he said, you know, just learn how to make bread. You know, bread bread is pizza, right? Yeah. So it, it made sense, and yeah, I I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna learn bread, and <laughs> I learned bread as as well as I could. To, to improve my pizza making. I mean, it it looks awesome. Like everything that you post, I'm like, I mm -hmm. want to eat that so bad. Um, and it, it, it took a while though, you know, to yeah, get there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Do you have a favorite like um, type of bread that you've gotten into? I, I kind of go with like phases, I would say. Every week I try to take on some projects, like one to three new projects or like some kind of improvement okay. on something I've already done. Right. So what I'll do is I'll make three different doughs for like three different kinds of breads or pizzas. Um, sometimes something new, sometimes like a little tweak on something I've done before. Um, you know, I've done, in terms of pizza, I've done let's say New York style, I've done Neapolitan, Detroit, Sicilian grandma. Done a Chicago cracker thin. I don't know if there's any of them like. Have you done a deep dish? Deep dish, not yet. It's on. I have like a long queue of projects I want to try. So not yet. There's just so many. But for me, it's like all these breads are so similar to each other. Like once you get into the formula, it's just like okay, you add or take away this much water, or you add this one other ingredient to it. You know, yeah. like. If you make croissants, it's just, it's taking the next step of enriching the dough with the uh, butter. Right. You know, it's kind of like you're, you have this center of the universe for me, it's pizza and then there's like this orbit, right? right? It's like deviating and then like, I don't want to go like where, where cakes are, right? Like I kind of want to stay, I would say like croissants are probably like, the edge of the universe for me. Yeah. You know what it is? Because you learn from other bread traditions. You can kind of incorporate into whatever you're working on at the time, you know? Right. So, like, this weekend I just made a, an Iran, a bread from Iran, right? Okay. And honestly, there was nothing in the bread formula that was unfamiliar to me. It was just, I had to make, like, a glaze and kind of pan it out, make it long. Okay. There, there's really nothing that's uh, that's new to it. Yeah, pizza pizza is is very. I mean, it's like a gateway drug for bread. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Also, it's the same thing with like like pasta. You know, it's like if you know yeah. if you know how you to make like the, right. So yeah, if, if you know how to make like the base, like if you have a base knowledge of something. All, all that all that these other like variations are they're just variations they're just like tweaking exactly. this and that and exactly. I would say the pandemic kind of exacerbated you know you know everyone was like stuck indoors right so it's like right. oh crap what am I gonna do I have nothing to do you know, half the planet was getting into baking at the time um, I was already in getting into that right. so I was just finding new projects to do uh, and my family eats whatever I make, or we right. freeze whatever I make. So, you know, it's, it's there's a big utility to it. Yeah. 
do you um, do you have an end game for for this uh, pizza bread making journey, or is it just like something that you like to do? I mean, I like so. doing it, and I think you know, I, I, get, I get asked a lot, like, "Oh, do you want to open your own your own shop or your, mm -hmm. your own business?" And I'm like, right. I, I saw my family <laughs> work their butts off for right. their entire lives. There's no, I'm not like rushing to get back into that, right. but yeah, I, I think you've also seen this. Probably oh, there's there's other ways to get in, involved in the industry that doesn't involve getting into opening a shop, right? Like look right. at Scott. Scott doesn't have a pizzeria. You don't have a pizzeria. Um, but I think we still participate yeah. and connect with pizza makers and pizza lovers and bread makers and bread lovers. Mm -hmm. so for me, I, I think that's a big draw, honestly, the, the people, right? If there are, if, if I wasn't meeting and connecting with all these other pizza makers, I, you know, I, <laughs> this would have just been a phase and then right. I would have gone to something else right after. Uh, yeah, it's crazy how um, uh, I, I before I, before I started my YouTube channel, I, um, I knew nothing about pizza. I didn't know about the Pizza Expo or anything like that. But like once I got yeah. into it, I was like. Wow, there's like a whole world of pizza right? people, and mm -hmm. the community is like crazy. It, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was. It's it, yeah. it's bigger, but then it's also it's also smaller than it's it's yeah. like um, it's very tight, tight knit. Like and yeah, I I, I haven't um, had like a bad experience or anything. Everyone I've met has been really really chill and really cool and. Um, and helpful, right? I think. Yeah, super helpful. It used to be, you know, oh, this is my secret ingredient. You know, get away in my right. competition. But now it's like, you know, oh, what questions do you have? I mean, let me help you out. I think. I think part of it is because, because we have access to so much information online, and it's mm -hmm. like there's no there's no sense in being secretive about stuff like that. It's like, it's kind of silly. But, it comes down to skill, right? Like, even if I told you right. my secret. My, my method, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you don't practice, if you don't put the work into it, it doesn't matter. For someone, for someone getting into pizza who's never mm -hmm. made a pizza before, what what advice would you have for that person? Uh, be prepared to fail, because that is a key ingredient to success. If you are willing to fail and then learn from that failure, you just add it. You know, to, to your big, your your project, right? Like that's gonna be one brick they're gonna add, and you just keep doing it, and then you'll have, you'll have all these bricks, and then before you know it, you'll, you'll get better at it. You know, right. as long as you take away one thing from each time you make a pizza, mm -hmm. you're gonna get better, right? There's that's just in inevitable. So when you first when you first 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 started making pizza, did you? Um, like how, where, how do you know where to start? Like, what did you, like who, who, who's like, what were your, your resources or your, you know, where'd you get your information from? So, you know, just by virtue of having my family in the pizza business, I kind of had you know, access to like seeing the oven and dough. Um, so my sister was actually friends with Scott before I was, okay. um, she had a connection through one of her internships. So I saw, you know, he was like the gateway to seeing all these other people in the, the industry, right? So from there, you know, advice from him and seeing kind of the who's who, the industry, that was a big, uh, you know, very useful tool, I would say. Yeah. Books, there's so many, so many useful books. Mm -hmm. Eat the Bible was a big one. Um, you know, Peter Reinhardt's books, very useful. And just, you know, the internet and Instagram, there's just loads of information. You just kind of have to dig and right. find it. Yeah. I would say, you know, there's, as you get better, there's some knowledge that's like, you know, you're not, you're not gonna find in books. You kind of have to like really start getting to like Google Scholar and you know, emailing one specific person to find a little tidbit of knowledge and again you add it that's that additional brick that you add to your to your project right 
do you do you have like a like a like a journal or a notebook where you keep notes or anything like that yeah you want to grab it yeah. wait right here sure <laughs> sure yeah it's just a staples spiral notebook um you know it's kind of falling apart but every week you know i'll write my formula my uh, formulas for what i'm doing that week because you know if it works out you're gonna be like oh what you know what did i do at that time that you know right that uh is kind of a key to a good pizza or a good bread and i think i i started writing in this is there dates here yeah so in 2016 wow. i'm still eating <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Mm. I have like sticky notes in here. So yeah, that's uh, the writing really helps. Yeah, I'm very grateful to be part of this this weird pizza community. Yeah. Uh, it's so eclectic too. It's like the kinds of people too. You know, it's not just it's not all Italian men named Tony. It's no, I mean that's it's, it's a good it's a good majority of them, but yeah, there are, there are yeah. some uh, all who like. I respect. But, you know, there's like yeah, there's Ann yeah. Kim in Minnesota. Who, mm -hmm. you know, she's she won the James Beard Award, and there's uh, like Sarah Minnick in Portland, who's amazing pizzas and does does those things to pizza that I would never even think of. You know, right. like oh, here's this vegetable that I'd never even heard of before, and like it's awesome on pizza. Yeah. Yeah, inspiration is everywhere. Yeah, sure. Got my peel right here. Did you have any of these big peels that you're? Um, <laughs> probably. That looks pretty big. Uh, yeah. Like, so, how, how many inches do you think that is? This is eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty big. I got this from Restaurant Depot. Okay. Uh, I like it. If this sticks, I apologize to the viewers out there. Um, kind of another image of, of me as a great pizza maker. Um, I'm sorry about that. You, you are <laughs> amazing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs>